Hi, folks. Can somebody comment in the uh, chat window to make sure we audio is coming through okay? Awesome. Thank you, Thomas. Um, I'll start off by answering a question that is slightly off topic from the Fusion Friday, but happy to uh, mention it, uh, which is that Jake asked that we're no longer accepting job shop work from a business perspective. How is this decision made? Um, we love job shop work. It's kind of how we got uh, a big part of how we got to where we are uh, balancing it with products uh, and everything else we do. But um, job shop work is tough for what I would say are probably obvious reasons to folks, but it's difficult to scale it. It comes in spurts um, and it's it's relatively easy, especially once you've got some customer base, it's relatively easy to do the work. But again, it's very difficult to grow it threefold or fivefold or tenfold. So um, I am a risk adverse entrepreneur, which is a little bit, uh, well, maybe not, not unusual, but um, I kind of want to have my cake and eat it too. I'm not the kind of guy who wants to go without any revenue and borrow a bunch of money in the hopes of a long-term huge success. I like to sort of truck along and work my butt off to generate cash and use that cash to let us do cool things and fun things. So um, ultimately though, I knew I wanted to focus on the products that we're making, the processes behind that, um, as well as the videos. And you know, being able to travel was a big part of it where um, we've got folks here that are are very good at what we do, but we're not all, you know, we don't have a deep roster of seasoned experienced machinists uh the way i like to say it is that uh we can machine great parts but we aren't great you know comprehensive machinists and um i just thought you know what let's let's focus on other aspects of this business so we're actually still doing a little bit of job shop work um, mostly for existing customers but um again to think about scaling it would mean really to scale it meaningfully you know multitudes of five fold or ten fold uh, more equipment, more full-time trained people, but also a lot more when it comes to quoting, uh, procurement of materials, the tools on hand, um, all that kind of stuff. So I'm happy to elaborate more, but for the sake of staying on topic to Fusion 360, um, skateboard mold. Okay, so this, Luke, uh, may be my beyond uh, my area of expertise with surfacing, but... Um, let's look up images, skateboard mold. Um, let's see if you can chime in. Uh, it seems like the chat stopped. Did anybody, can somebody comment to see if the chat's still going? I don't know why we're not seeing um, any additional. Okay. Uh, where will our revenue come from if we're not doing job shop work? Uh, well, we make the Saunders Machine Works products. Um, YouTube itself is, uh, is a business and then we run our training program. Um, okay, so skateboard surface. Um, well, um, so I'm not an industrial designer, and I, I think that's probably important because I'm, I would suspect that some of these um, elements would would need to have certain surfaces um, and so forth. But let's um, Let's just do a quick example, two different ways, I suppose. New design, sketch, spline, pull this up. Um, actually, you know what we could do? Um, let's just do this for fun. Right click, save this image as. Let's do go insert, attach to canvas. We'll put it on this face right here. We'll pick that image. And let's scale it up a little. So this obviously is not the right perspective, but um, I think this will show off a kind of a cool technique that we may be able to make use of. So now I can do sketch spline. And what I'll do is I'll pick as few points as I can that still represent the shape of the geometry. Um, yes, yeah, so let's see here. If we do another one, it might click OK. So I don't like the top one. It hugs it, uh, goes a little bit too high. So you can take 
uh, if we zoom in, each spline, I believe they're called nodes, has uh, these green lines that come off of it in symmetric uh, left to right or, or equal direction. So I can adjust the um, angle and the distance of that. So that'll let me kind of pull that in. Um, and what that shows is I've got this spline shaped thing and you can look up what splines are, but they tend to be very commonly used for very natural free flowing shapes. So stop that. Um, so wh what do you do with that now? It's a great question. Um, you can't extrude a line. Um, you could S offset that line, offset it a distance, say 0.05, could join it and anyone on here who is good with splines uh, or surfacing is probably going to have a fit right now so that gives us this kind of a uh, quickly organic style shape and then we could come in here from the top and let's say um, turn on my origin let's sketch a circle on that plane so if we did a circle uh, let's see here Actually, you know what you could do actually is maybe you could even use a fillet tool. Yeah, so you could do fillets. Oops. Yeah, so that's that's a, a very quick version of something that's done uh, in the CAD model environment. If you hop into patch, um, there's all, some really good videos. I'm trying to think if I can find them uh, offhand um, while we're on this live chat. Um, oops. This guy's uh, just brilliant. Um, Fusion 360 surface modeling tips. Yes, awesome. Okay, so guys, I'm going to paste uh, this guy's channel in the comments right now. His uh, videos on his his videos are great in general and his style and his uh, charisma he's clearly in a talented I think he's a full-time just sort of designer um, he goes over some really good examples of where patch is great where t-spine is great dealing with uh, correct intersections of certain surfaces for example if you do under patch if you create excuse me uh, model that's right the sculpt environment you create a sculpted shape Uh, there's a really important, some really important uh, things when it comes to how you intersect when you end up with more than three or four lines intersecting um, and so forth. Um, so I'll leave it at that because uh, this is not something that I'm uh, very good at. Um, uh, Jeff's asking, I want to use a lofted geometry to make a blade bevel instead of a swept cut. Um, so we actually just had that um posted as it's it's under the pro section of the website though which i always hesitate because i um i we, i'm very proud of the pro content but i don't want these videos to turn into something where we're just um sitting here pushing our pro membership um but under the pro content we've got a knife blade tutorial video uh i thought so take a look Maybe we, we it may be the case. No, it's right here. Maybe it's not in the pro. Sorry. Maybe it's open and free. Um, the idea with the membership site is most of the content is open, but we do have some of the value added stuff behind a, a the paywall. So Jeff, take a look at this uh, tutorial and see if that helps you um, deal with this. Uh, this uh, section here is a sweep, but then this I believe is a loft back here. Can you project a sketch with open, I assume you mean contours, on the face of that model? Um, can I, let's see here, delete this thing. Can I project, I'm not sure I understand that question, Satburn. Can you project a sketch with open contours on the face of that model? So uh, what he's saying would be, let's create a, um, we'll do a slot just to make it something different. Center point slot right here. And I'll put a slot right up here. 
So stop sketch. So he's asking, I believe, can we project? Oh, but he wants open contour. So that's now an open contour. Um, can I project that on the face this model? So P for project. Ah, I see what you're saying. Um, the issue is obviously that, that you can't pick this. Uh, there is a way to do that. Um, oh, come on. That's going to bother me. Um, and we covered it in a split face no if you extruded hmm let's hop into patch these are good questions um extend no create patch from this no um there is a way to project um it's bothering me that I can't think of it. Yeah, I don't want to sit here and fumble on online. There's a video that we've done actually where we project it onto a round surface, which is another example of where you can't um, you can't pick that as a face to project onto. Does somebody know offhand? Um, it's not thicken. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Shoot me an email, um, Satburn, uh, John at nyccnc.com, and I can. That'll make a note. I'll, maybe we'll do a Fusion Friday on the, on that sort of a specific thing. Um, ben Carlson, I'm working on a wing spar. Very cool. It's got hundreds of rivet holes in a repeating pattern. However, there are larger bolt holes, and the rivet hole is is interrupted. How can you do this? So, should be relatively easy. We'll keep, we'll stay with our skateboard here. Um, I'm going to C for circle, put a 0.125 hole on here. I'll extrude it all the way through and S pattern. So I'm going to do a rectangular pattern. I'm going to pattern the feature that I just made, which is the features that cut down here. And then dimensions I'll say is this and this. So I'll say quantity, uh, I always like to do distance of spacing, quantity 10, distance 0.2, and the other direction would be 0.2 as well, negative. So you have a grid, and if we needed to skip a couple, we can just uncheck those two and say this guy right here, click OK, and you've now created a pattern with skipped holes. Troy, yeah, we may not have enough up. Uh, we don't have superb internet here in, in central Ohio, unfortunately. Um, going back up here a little. Um, yeah, Thomas, it is what I did when I projected text onto a cylinder for engraving. I just don't remember offhand how I did it. Confusion 360 work with a five axis machine using all five axes. Yep, absolutely can. Um, you need to have the what's considered the um, ultimate version. But if you go into cam samples, and all, the free version, if you're using the free version or hobby version, is, is ultimate. Um, but you can see, like in example, this Swerf tool path, um, which is uh, one of these is a, the sample file. Yeah, the next one is the one that actually has the um, Swerf toolpath done. So this will simulate, it'll look like the tool is moving, but in reality on your most traditional five axis machines where the trunnion is and the part is moving, um, this will work. And we've actually run this code uh, on our Haas uh, trunnion with <laughs> well, the few times that we had it on the machine. So, oh, let me see if I can go back. So the problem with, this may not answer the skateboard question, but um, if we undo this pattern and we turn that sketch back on, if we reconnected the line, oops, L, what you could do 
is something you could extrude it down as a solid. Uh, I think a little bit more elegant way maybe to patch. Um, let's see here, create patch of this. And then you can extend. I'm actually, maybe I'm full of it. I'm not sure why this was necessarily any better. Um, new body here. And then you could do split body, split face. I'm not sure what's the split face with that. And the tool would be one, two, three, click OK. Hide that other body. Nope, I'm wrong. Let me work on that offline. I don't want to take everyone's time up here. I would like to see how to use reference images, for example, laying out circuit boards in an enclosure. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what you mean, but I will tell you we have a number of times used uh, the import photo feature. So it's as simple really as we go to Google Images Uh, you need to really own, be able to um, measure the product um, in, in hand for this to work. And it'll be better if it's a directly head on picture. But if we take this picture and um, I'd like to do something with holes in it, it'll be a better example for the uh, intersecting or making it work with fusion. So if we save this image, actually, let me save it as a, so we're going to insert as an attached canvas, that file that we just made. And the key is you, if you own it, um, if you own the circuit board, you can use a pair of calipers to measure it. Or I guess if you knew, uh, what some of these chips were, you could even look up their dimensions. So let's use that. Let's say uh, we know this chip is um, 20 millimeters. We'll, we'll, we'll please the Europeans here, the rest of the world with some metric. So I right click on the canvas PCB and I'm going to choose calibrate. And I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to pick the left edge. And actually it would be better to do it on the edge. That way I am certain that I'm picking um, a straight line relative to the integrated circuit here. And I'm gonna say 30 millimeters. And that has been incredibly accurate for us. Again, subject to the quality of the picture, um, but it's been incredibly accurate. So now what we could do is create a box for this uh, R for rectangle, um, You know, put a rectangle on here and C for circle. Sometimes what I'll do is just drag the circle around after I've made it kind of get it centered and then dimension it afterward. Point, point 0.5, C for circle, do the same thing kind of here. Um, R for rectangle, I have a cutaway right here or something and E for extrude and um, drag this down and you know, you sort of, you get the idea, but we did this on a rifle stock years ago and we got within, I think five or 10, excuse me, five or 10 thousandths of an inch uh, for a relatively complex sh shape. Um, if you have the item using a zoom lens, a optical zoom, not a digital zoom and setting the object further away and zooming in on it will give you less perspective distortion. Basically the camera is gonna be taking less of a angled out view. So you're gonna get a straight on, better straight on view of the object. And then obviously try to avoid shadows or, or have higher contrast. It makes it easier to measure things. Uh, is there a way to import Gerber files for PCB milling? I don't, I don't know. I thought Gerber, um, Gerber export DXF. I'm pretty sure um, Gerber would let you export various. Yeah, pretty sure your solution there would be to export a DXF, um, Simon. Chris asks, is there a way to save the cam simulating settings? I always prefer, and I wanted to reset them. No, there's not, and this drives me nuts. And in fact, I tried to find some software. It actually is really close to working, but it doesn't work. So I wasn't, um, it's basically it's software that can automate processes on your computer. And so what it can do is you program the software by having showing 
uh, things that you want it to recognize on screen. So when I would go into simulate, uh, let's open up that Swarf toolpath, it can recognize um, it can recognize this window, and then it can automatically do things like uncheck stock, move it to tail, or check it and turn it into a different material. Um, the problem is you've got all these different use case scenarios, depending on what's checked, this image itself changes. But I really wish, because um, I switch between, let's see, what do I switch between? No stock, toolpath for operation with show points. This is my like one default view. And then I turn uh, points off, tail, and then, excuse me, stock with, uh, I shouldn't have had stock on a second to go, with um, wall paint is my other sort of common view. Uh, Hugo asks, new to CNC, I bought an older multi-cam CNC router with NRoute 5. Does Fusion work with NRoute? So I don't know. The answer, though, is to go to cam.autodesk dot com slash posts. Uh, I'll put that in the chat right now, but check a look there. Um, they have quite a few, more than any other machine uh, cam software for sure or for free, but you can go through uh, and either search or scroll through. These are all posts that are all free. Uh, there's a good chance that that brand you mentioned, multi-cam CNC router, that probably isn't what you're looking for. In fact, we can just search for it, um, but rather what control it uses. So is it, oh, no, multi-cam, boom. How about that? Apparently they may have one, but sometimes a machine would use a FANUC controller or Linux CNC, or uh, I don't know all the router sort of versions, but that may be what you want to look for. But it looks like you're actually in luck. Thomas asks, ever done any work in the sheet metal environment? I'm a leather worker. Uh, I haven't done much, um, but we've, we've had Kevin who works here, does our training classes, um, he has done a couple of videos on, so if we go back to the NYC site, Fusion 360 Sheet Metal, I think there'd be only two right now. I'll paste that link in there, but we've got an intro video and some Sheet Metal Rules stuff. Um, if there's something more you'd like us to do, shoot us an email and we can see about doing that as an upcoming video. What P value are you using on G64? Uh, if that's for the lathe, um, I think we just put in G64 without a specific p-value, and that generally works for the basic turning stuff that we do. Uh, sometimes I notice that, uh, Jake asks, sometimes I notice that faces on my model appear to be split with a line. I know this is due to the faces being two-tenths apart. Um, so that's odd. Um, I'm not sure why that would be happening, Jake, especially if you're creating the model. But if you sometimes if you import certain files from other CAD software, there'll be surfaces. Um, so you'll and they may not all be touching. It's called watertight. Um, actually, a lower receiver is a great example. It's the one I think I happen to have. If, we'll see if it can I can pull it up here quickly or not. Um, but basically what you want to do is uh, what's called stitch uh, or boundary fill. In fact, that's what we can do. Um, go back here. Let's see, boundary fill. I think I have a video on this. Um, AR lower. That's the video we covered it in. No. Hmm. Let me see here. Did it come up? It's not coming up right away. Um, what you would want to do is, oops, go into model and select everything and you can do um, create boundary fill, could do it, or under the patch environment, select all your surfaces and then go to modify stitch. And that will give you the tolerance that you're looking for, Jake. So if it finds anything within one millimeter or two tenths, it will automatically stitch it together. How do I have uh, 86 uh, Holden asks, how do I avoid bending thin parts when using the super glue technique? 
maybe 80 thou thick. What do you mean bending parts when you remove them? Uh, if it's removing them, um, no a heat gun that's going the, going to heat your super glue will uh, activate the, or release the super glue way below uh, your compromise any heat to treat. So I would say that uh, your typical hair dryer or heat gun will still work. Um, you can use a bumping the part on its side. If it's that's thin, it may be tough. Uh, otherwise, gently prying underneath it with the um, painter's tool or the ones. Oh, I see. Seems to be super glue. I think I linked one of these tools uh, here because it's so useful. Yeah. So we buy one of these paint scraper things um, that lets you wedge underneath the part evenly. You shouldn't much bend it much at all. Uh, in other words, it shouldn't ha shouldn't deform your metal or material past uh, the point of return. Um, or you can still get an acetone, which just takes a while. Oh, I'm, I'm in private mode for some reason right now. Sorry, I don't even mean to be the, in, I was checking a permission site on our NYC site to see if it was something in our, as a pro members are open. Uh, Shane asks, is there a technique and checklist you would use to mill parts with tabs in 6061? Uh, I'm not sure. No, I don't have a specific uh, checklist um, if we were to look at a part here, uh, if I were to machine this part, you, you generally want to have at least three tabs on any part, um, more the better. A lot of times what I'll do would be, let's just do it real quick. 2D contour, like a quarter inch end mill. So if we were to walk all the way around that and use tabs, um, you know, every three or four inches or something. So you could do distance three inches, um, tab height, 50 thou, tab width quarter inch, that's fine. But then a lot of times what I'll do, why don't I have any tabs there? Part maybe pretty too small, there we go. A lot of times what I'll then do is I'll duplicate that operation and I'll come in and I may, um, actually I'll do it this way. I would go into back into the model environment um, and I would create some sketches where those tabs are. And uh, I would actually come back in and I would stay off the part. So radial stock to leave, say five thou. Um, but then I would start machining those tabs down. And because you're staying off the sidewall of the part, you're not going to be pushing against this big workpiece. So you can machine those tabs down, say from 50 thousandths of an inch down to like 5 thousandths of an inch. It makes it much easier to clean up the tab uh, after your part's off the machine. Um, is there, hold on, is there a way... To do undercuts with fork with fourth axis and keep tool only using the fourth and not fifth asks Josh. The only cam op that uses, oh, I should know this. Um, I can't think of this offhand. Sorry, guys. Shoot me an email, uh, Josh, because uh, I don't want to misspeak, but there's only, oh, didn't we uh, cover it in a video? Diffusion undercuts. Yeah, we, we mentioned it in this video. I don't rec recall offhand. Um, but, um, it's not going to have anything simultaneous fourth, Josh, the only three tool paths that can handle simultaneous fourth right now, uh, are the ones, uh, 2d adaptive pocket and contour. They're the ones where under the geometry tab, you see this wrap tool path setting. Now, any of the tool paths can handle uh, positional. So three plus one or three plus two for sure. Do I have problems with the super glue gumming up the flutes? No, not the super glue. Uh, I have noticed the tape on the flutes before, but it's that's never been a problem. When I ch when changing to a drill on my 440, I have to stop the job and jog the table over to make enough room for the length of the drill. Have you found a decent workaround for this problem, Josh? Absolutely. Um, go to um, go to nyccnc.com. 
go to Fusion 360 post processors. Uh, we have a couple of video on beginner's guides to um, this one here, uh, Fusion Friday 127. I'll put the link in the text the chat here. Uh, we talk about being able to move your machine to a specific location, which on the 440 is really good to uh, move the drill so that's not over your vice or workpiece so that you actually have the Z clearance to pull it out. Carl asks, would you still use a tiny G for the little DIY guy or would you go to one of the standalone seating controls? Uh, Carl, unfortunately it's been so long and I'm hoping that there's been some good advances. Uh, not that there was anything wrong with tiny G, but it's really been two or three years since I paid attention to what's happening uh, in that world. So I really would, I would say do some research. I don't have any uh, new um, value to add. Dennis asks, John, I'm having a cam problem with slotting of two or more parts in one 2D profiling operation with multiple passes. The tool generate tool pass is randomly moving from one part to the other. So Dennis, uh, it's a little bit tough to diagnose without seeing the part, but under passes, you can say um, preserve order and you can choose, let's see, there's a setting somewhere that can focus on sort of go do all this area first before you move over. Um, so I would check uh, check in there. Or, or shoot us an email, we can take a look at it. Greg says, sometimes I try to do a bore or drilling operation, but when I click the wall of the hole, Fusion does recognizing it. Probably a bad model, Greg. I'm guessing it's something that you didn't make. Um, we, if we have that, we will just go um, project that geometry. Um, it's not something I can really do right now because I don't have an example of a, something that's not a hole. It's not actually, actually a good hole, but we'll project it and then that will let us um, create the correct hole location. Um, 2010 Troy Boy asks, do I get software crashes creating form mill tools? Uh, not really. I, I don't create them every day though. Um, and they are in beta. Uh, if somebody told me it was causing Fusion to crash, I, I wouldn't necessarily be shocked, but if it's crashing every time, for sure, submit a report ticket. Okay, here's a good one. Uh, a fellow asks, when I select cutting strategies, some check marks are already on by default, like stock to leave. Can I change this? You can. So what he's asking for is under 2D contour, passes, stock to leave. So the values here, I can right click and choose make default. How do you do that with this checkbox button? The way to do that is right click on the operation and instead of doing edit, do compare and edit. And that brings up sort of a data driven parameter in the background of what's happening in the scenes here. So we can type in stock and stock uh, to leave, use stock to leave, yes or no. And then this you can right click on and choose to set to make default, which is great. Uh, Chris, I, uh, Chris is saying, I know slotting is a no-no, but if you have any recipes, um, let me know. So uh, coincidentally, this morning we were filming some slotting stuff. So give us a few, actually probably about a month before that video comes out, but we are working on some really good slotting stuff. Um, Owen asks, newbie to the channel, are the live streams a regular thing? Uh, so we used to do a video every Friday called the Fusion Friday, where we would publish a video uh, we've done like 120 of them on Fusion 360. Um, I'm thinking about changing that up a little. Uh, I love the Fusion Fridays, and I believe they're quite popular with folks that use Fusion, but they're not super popular videos in the scheme of YouTube. Um, so two things. One is we're trying this as a live event to see if interacting with you guys changes the what you get out of it, and I certainly enjoy it as well. The other thing, if you're learning Fusion, is I would say check out uh, the nyccnc.com website. We are regularly putting out content uh, on that site and not all of it is you know, publicly through our YouTube channel. So if you go here, you can click on things like Fusion 360, there's 207 videos. So some of them are uh, duplicative with YouTube, uh, but some of them are not. Um, and we would love to continue to build this out as a resource for folks that are trying to get started uh, with entrepreneurship or machining or Fusion. Ooh, 
George asks a good one. Um, how would you go about camming up a part for a mill with manual Z axis, such as an Acer, no fancy parts? Um, so what I would probably do, uh, George, is you could probably write a, make a post-processor edit that would, uh, actually you definitely could do this, where you would have all of your, uh, let's see if I've got a uh, cammed up part here, where after every single operation, if it changed tools, um, it would just wait for you to update the tool height, which you would do with your quill or your table. And then you would hit cycle start again, and it would then uh, resume uh, to let you make the manual Z adjustments. How do you generate contact curve for a given drive curve? I, I don't know uh, beyond my, don't, don't even know what that is. So sorry, I can't help you there. Ben asks, um, what do you calculator do you use for speeds and feeds, depth of cut, cutter engagement? Uh, this is an easy one. If you guys have followed the channel, you know we love uh, the speeds and feeds worksheet here that we made. You can download it. Oh, um, if you go to NYCCNC speeds and feeds, the basics, I'll put this link in here. Um, but we have this video, this Excel sheet. Watch the video. Um, watch this walk through it. Speeds and feeds are not hard. We give you starting recipes. We give you the basics of chip load per tooth. In my opinion, you really don't need a calculator. Uh, and some of those calculating softwares, I think, um, give you either bad recipes or do too much behind the scenes and make it overly complicated. Um, Steve Farkas asks, what's the best way to show what didn't get machined in simulation? Unfortunately, there isn't a great way, Steve. I, I'd love for there to be kind of that heat map um, where Fusion would show you uh, what's left with a color gradient. Um, but what we tend to do is turn the stock on and then toggle the model. N not great, and it's for sure easy to miss um, minor things. If you really want to try something, what you could do is simulate your whole cam program and then you're left with in this bot part example with this you could right click stock you could save your stock as an stl file you could re-import that file and then you could do a cad um i think it's called a combined function where you could compare that stock with the model and and you would subtract the two and see what's left but that's a pain in the butt Uh, John asks, would you recommend the one inch modular to do deeper holes in the 1100? Ironically, that's what we're filming today. Um, so the modular one is great. Um, it's a little bit application specific because I'm not sure you're, it's not going to open up a whole new world that you didn't have with the three quarter inch one with the difference that with the modular one, you have the option of a much longer stick out. Um, what we're doing today is building up some recipes to show folks how to use that. Uh, I'll pull this up so people know what we're talking about. Um, it's an insanely long tool that is, um, this is an example of where it's easy to use poorly. So it's a modular head, um, but what's nice is you can stick it on this uh, adapter and we have this long one, which is insane. It's four, four inch stick out. Um, but when you're, when the cutting forces are axial, like in other words, you're doing a drilling style action, it's actually pretty good. Thomas asks, have you thought about offering Pro membership for different categories of videos? No, it would be way too complicated, Thomas, to offer all these different versions and flavors. And uh, our opinion is it's it's a relatively inexpensive membership. Um, so uh, we would rather keep it simple and, and, and not get it complicated, but also um, we want to keep the price reasonable. Uh, are you guys going to more videos on running a machine shop? Uh, that's definitely, that's what we keep doing. I'm not sure. Is there something specific you're asking about? Um, how do you create a domed oval? Okay. This, uh, uh, Canon custom says, I'm trying to make a custom car emblem. How do you create a domed oval? Uh, this is a good, good, should be a good example. Um, I can do this pretty quick. I think new design. Uh, let's do this sketch. Uh, let's see here. Now I'm lost. Oh, here we go. Sketch uh, ellipse. So we'll sketch our ellipse this way. And now what we can do is stop the sketch. L for line. We'll sketch a line here. I'm going to come up here. And then I'm going to do 
arc, three point arc, and I'll catch, sketch that arc. And if I let it snap there, it becomes kind of tangent too. Um, ooh, I may be full of it. S sweep. No, um, somebody tell me what I'm missing here. This is this is not particularly difficult. Um, a loft. Um, sorry, I thought I had that in my head. Now I'm not, I'm not remembering. Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap up here soon to try to get, or I'm not going to take any more questions. So I'm going to try, try to get through um, where we're at now. Somebody, somebody chime in if you can remember, tell me how to do this. I'm embarrassed. I don't remember. John uh, Balzac asks, what's your take on extended link tools at 1100? Uh, we're, we're trying to do some more content later this summer uh, on all that kind of stuff. I, I, any machine, it's, it's not even really machine specific. Using longer tools to get good recipes is, is something that's tricky and, and we're working on it. Is it a revolve? I thought, it, I thought a revolve was around an axis though. Um, S revolve this platform around this. That's a dome shaped circle though. I need it to sweep around this. Create the oval, then place a line through the center. Nope. Um, Fred asks, how does this software compare to Mastercam? Uh, we don't own Mastercam. I've seen it used, but um, not something we commonly use. Uh, the big difference is that Mastercam for a true three axis version would probably be eight to $10,000 plus probably about $1,000 a year in maintenance. Um, five axis would be significantly more. Uh, Mastercam is a huge player in the industry, uh, but we don't see uh, much of a user base um, in our world because it's quite expensive and uh, honestly doesn't have the same community and user base uh, that's willing to share and be part of the kind of world that we live in. Um, again, it's good software. It can make pretty good tool paths, um, but a, a bit more difficult to, to learn and use. And that's probably true of a lot of CAM software. There's some really powerful and very good CAM software out there, but um, often very expensive, often very difficult to learn. You know, things like post-processors will often cost thousands of dollars, so forth. Loft oval to single point at the top. Ah, there we go. S loft, there we go. Maybe I can loft this. Uh, that's not, oh, here we go. And then guide rails. No. Yeah, when will I get our MAM 72? We had fun at that Matsura tour. Um, I would love to get a five axis machine at some point, but we're, we're not there yet. Um, Joey asks, can you do a video comparing good and bad feeds and speeds? Well, again, we're working on it. We've got a lot of that stuff in the uh, pipe now. Um, okay, well, I, I feel like I kind of got my butt kicked here. Um, making a sphere and slice off the dome. Yeah, all these things folks would do circular things. He's asking for... Uh, a oval, um, and I'm kicking myself. Um, the argument vertically needs to be a face use sweep. Well, we'll do it. We'll we'll get ready for this next week. How about that? If somebody knows, could you uh, shoot us an email, John at nyccnt.com on, or I'm sure we can figure it out, but sweeping uh, to create a domed oval shaped object. Um, would be great. Otherwise, folks, thanks for joining us. Um, let me know. Let me know if you. There we go. Fred's chiming in. Mastercam six grand for annual maintenance. That seems high. Um, Fifteen thousand for C three axis. I, I've heard it's not that expensive, but nevertheless, nevertheless, um, it's just you know, Fusion is definitely changing the world with the pricing model, and we're we're seeing a lot of other software companies go. Uh, abandoned perpetual licenses. So you don't get to buy the software anymore, but you kind of rent it like you do with Fusion uh, each year. I, I know some people don't like that, but um, from a business side, it creates a bit of a better business model for the software vendor because 
Uh, they've got to keep the lights on with ongoing renewals. And it's a trade-off. But for my opinion, even Fusion Pro that costs 1500 bucks a year, that's the same we were paying for support or the maintenance contract on our SolidWorks. So um, I don't really have a, a problem with it um, long-term. You just did the dome oil infusion, Michael. Do you mind emailing it to me? Um, oh, push the plus when when guy Kurt Werner saying, hold on, was I that close? So loft, the loft. So profile, I want to loft this. Oops, to here. And then the rail, there we go. I did something wrong over here, um, but that's that's pretty close. What did I do wrong? Okay, well, I don't want to keep rambling here either. Um, oh, you know what it is? It's because I don't have this um, object going all the way through. If this went all the way through, Actually, really not what we want there. We gotta reduce that down. Make these two equal. Now, loft, loft this to here using the guide rail. That, that's I think what we're looking for. Okay. Close enough. Um, do we have two bodies? No, just got the sketch. I wonder why I have a split line there. I don't like that. That's odd. Yeah, Kevin, or, or sorry, Robert Schmidt says, if you don't know what to software to start with, use Fusion and get started. Uh, completely agree. Uh, if people, if you outgrow Fusion or you outgrow uh, a software machine, that's a good thing, but a great way to get started and relatively easy and so forth. So folks, uh, thanks for joining. I appreciate it. I hope you guys like this live stuff. Um, stick back. We're going to plan on doing this again uh, next week. NYCCNC.com. Michael, thank you very much for sending that over. Um, all right, folks, appreciate it. Have a very good weekend. We'll see you around.